Hello everyone. We continue our exploration of the world of mental disorders, this time we will focus on the personality disorders described in DSM-5. All humans, and many other species, have personality traits. These traits represent settled ways in which people experience, perceive and interact with everything and everyone in their environment. When these traits become rigid, and start causing distress, or impair the functioning of the individual, then we might suspect that the individual has developed a personality disorder. Oftentimes, such traits form a pattern of thinking and behaviors that could be traced back to the early years of people's lives. According to DSM-5, all personality disorders share certain characteristics. Criterion A of the general personality disorder states that behavior patterns and the internal sensations, such as feelings, and thoughts are clearly different from the person's culture. Two or more of the following will be present. The client can experience problems in cognition, that is, the way they see themselves, others and events. Also, differences can be seen in the affectivity, including the range, intensity, lability, and appropriateness of the emotional response. Interpersonal functioning and impulse control may also be affected. Criterion B. The pattern of behaviors is fixed across a broad range of personal and social situations. Criterion C. The traits cause distress and impairment in relations, at work and in other important areas of life. Criterion D. Behaviors have been present for a long period of time, at least from adolescence or early adulthood. Criterion E. The behaviors are not the result or another mental disorder. Criterion F. The behavioral pattern is not the results of substance abuse, medication use or another medical condition, such as head trauma. People with paranoid personality disorder, are suspicious, and quick to take offense. They often have few close friends and may read hidden meaning into innocent remarks. In many situations, these clients show distrust to the loyalty or trustworthiness of others. Because they suspect that other people want to deceive, hurt, or exploit them, they hesitate to share personal information. Unjustified suspicions about the faithfulness of spouse or partner, or even the misperception of hidden content in everyday events or speech, can lead to the bearing of grudges or to rapid response with anger or attacks. Disorder usually begins in teens or early 20s and persists. The paranoid personality disorder affects about 1% of the population and is usually diagnosed in men. The disorder should not occur exclusively during the course of schizophrenia, a bipolar disorder or depressive disorder with psychotic features, or another psychotic disorder and is not attributable to the physiological effects of another medical condition. In many situations, people with schizoid personality disorder remain isolated and have a narrow emotional range. They prefer solitude in their activities, they neither want nor enjoy close relationships, including those with family. They may have no close friends, with the possible exception of relatives. Really, they enjoy few activities, even showing little interest in sex with other people. Emotionally cold or detached, they seem indifferent to both criticism and praise. In many situations, clients with schizotypal personality disorder, tend to be isolated and exhibit a narrow emotional range with other people. They will have paranoid or suspicious ideas, even ideas of reference that do not reach the delusional extent. Their dress or mannerisms may give them an odd appearance, with effect that is inappropriate or constricted, speech can be vague, impoverished, or overly abstract. They may report strange perceptions or physical sensations, and their peculiar behavior may be affected by magical thinking or other odd beliefs, such as superstitions or a belief in telepathy. With severe social anxiety, which doesn't improve with acquaintance, they tend to have no intimate friends. Clients with antisocial personality disorder often have a history dating before age 15, of destroying property, serious rule violation, or aggression against people or animals. Since then, in many situations, they lie, con, or give an alias while engaging in behaviors that warrant arrest, whether or not they have been actually detained. Relying on the impulse, they tend to fight or assault others, and generally fail to plan their activities. For none of this behavior do they show remorse, other than feeling sorry if caught. They will refuse to pay their debts or maintain steady employment. They may irresponsibly place themselves or other people in danger. The clients with borderline personality disorder exist in a perpetual crisis of mood or behavior. They often feel empty and bored. They suffer from disturbed identity and insecure self-image that can lead them to attach themselves strongly to others, and then reject these same people with equal vigor. On the other hand, they may frantically try to avert abandonment, whether it is real or imagined. Striking impulsiveness can lead them to harm or mutilate themselves, or to engage in other potentially harmful behaviors, 
such as sexual indiscretions, pending sprees, eating binges, or reckless driving. Although stress can cause brief episodes of dissociation or paranoia, these symptoms tend to quickly disappear. Intense, rapid mood swings may yield to anger that is inappropriate and uncontrolled. The clients with histrionic personality disorder not only crave the limelight, but are unhappy when they are not the focus of attention. They actively attempt to draw attention to themselves, with their physical appearance and mannerisms. Their manner of speaking may be overly dramatic, but what they say tends to be vague, lacking specificity. They can be gushing or effusive when expressing their emotions, which, however, tend to be superficial and fleeting. Too open to suggestion, too readily influenced, these people may interpret relationships as being intimate when they're not, even to the extent of behaving in ways that are improperly suggestive or seductive. People with narcissistic personality disorder possess grandiosity, together with a craving for admiration. To get it, they typically exaggerate their own abilities and accomplishments. They tend to be preoccupied with fantasies of beauty, brilliance, perfect love, power, or limitless success, and believe that they are so unusual, that they should only associate with people or institutions of elevated status. Often arrogant or haughty, they may believe that others envy them, although they are often the ones who envy others. Lack of empathy allows them to use their feelings of privilege and justify the exploitation of others to achieve their own goals. People with avoidant personality disorder are socially inhibited, are overly sensitive to criticism, and feel inadequate. Feeling themselves inferior, unappealing, or clumsy, they are reluctant to form new relationships. Such people so fear ridicule or shame, that they will only become involved with others if they can know in advance they will be accepted. Otherwise, they can be so worried about being rejected, criticized or embarrassed on the job or in social situations, that they would rather avoid doing new things. Dependent Personality Disorder the need for supportive relationships makes these people cling to others, practice submissive behavior out of fears of separation. Fear of disapproval makes it difficult to say no to others. In order to gain support, they will take remarkable steps, such as accepting unpleasant tasks. Low self-confidence stops them from initiating and carrying out projects independently. Very often, they will want others to take responsibility for their own major life areas. Many times they will seek lots of advice and reassurance just to make even everyday decisions. Excessive, unrealistic fears of abandonment, and the sense that they cannot care for themselves, will make people with dependent personality disorder feel helpless or uncomfortable when alone. Therefore, they may desperately seek a replacement for a close personal relationship that ended. People with obsessive-compulsive personality disorder are strongly focused on control, orderliness, and perfection. They can become so preoccupied with details, organization, and rules of an activity that they lose the ability to see the purpose of what they are doing. They tend to be inflexible and headstrong, trying so hard to be perfect that they might not be able to finish the tasks. They can be exceedingly conscientious, rigid, or scrupulous about values, ethics, and morals. Many are workaholics. Some will not engage in work unless other people do things exactly the way the client wants. It's not uncommon for people living with obsessive-compulsive personality disorder to try preserve worthless items or be stingy with themselves and others. In some cases, a physical illness or injury may cause a client to suffer a lasting personality change. For example, personality change may be caused by an injury to the brain, or by some other central nervous system disorder, such as epilepsy or Huntington's disease. When personality changes occur, mood may become unstable with some outbursts of anger or suspiciousness. Other clients become apathetic and passive. Changes in mood are particularly common when the person sustains the damage to the frontal lobes of the brain. People suffering from the temporal lobe epilepsy can become verbose, lack a sense of humor, or aggressive. The type specifiers can be used in the coding notes to note the nature of the personality change. The more substantial is the damage to the brain, the more persistent personality change can be expected. If the change is caused by substance, the problem may resolve over time. This category applies to cases when personality disorder symptoms cause clinically significant distress or impairment in the person's life, but do not meet the full criteria for any of the disorders in the personality disorders diagnostic class. The unspecified personality disorder category is used in situations in which the clinician chooses not to specify the reason that the criteria are not met. Is it is also used in those cases when there is insufficient information to make a more specific diagnosis.